11 Oregon Ducks versus the number three ranked and defending national champion Georgia Bulldogs. This game is being played in Atlanta and somebody had the audacity to call it a neutral site game. I am not <laughs> one of those people, but off the top, Jeff, what are you looking for from your Oregon Ducks in this game? So Oregon, by the way, has called this at Georgia the entire time. They like other schedule says at Georgia on their website. It does not <laughs> say like versus Georgia neutral site in Atlanta. Um, you know, what I'm looking for for Oregon is defensively, can they be the unit that keeps this game close? Uh, there's a lot of talk about Georgia's defense, rightfully so. Jalen Carter, right? Nolan Smith, Kaylee Ringo, like these guys are fantastic. Great football players, first round draft picks, elite level players. But Oregon also has guys on their defense that'll be first round draft picks. Noah Sue will be a first round draft pick. Christian Gonzalez at corners getting talk about a first round draft pick. Brandon Dorless, um, DJ Johnson in, on, on the defense. Like they have guys too. So defensively, can Oregon do enough early in the game to keep this close? Georgia lost two offensive linemen to the draft, a wide receiver, two running backs. So like there are some pieces they have to, you know, they have five stars to replace those guys. I get all that. Setson Bennett to me not the best quarterback in the world. So can Oregon do things defensively to keep this game close? Because I don't trust Bo Nix. 0% trust in Bo Nix. I, I get it. He needs a new environment. He needs a, a new coach, new, hearing new things, doing something a little different than he's done in the past. But we have three years of him uh, playing in, in games in the SEC conference. Like, I don't, I don't, I typically don't believe players in year four turn to something they haven't been for the first three years. So if we can avoid the Bo Nix mistakes, we have our entire offensive line back, plus a couple of young guys that'll play. We have good good running backs, good wide receivers. So again, there's a formula keeping this game close. The question is the physicality over 60 minutes. Are we there yet in our program to get this done? Also, again, same question for Marcus Freeman. Dan Lanning's first time as a head coach. He's 36 years old. His offensive coordinator is 32 years old. First time having an offense. Like there are questions, uh, there are questions with experience of coaching staff against a very veteran Georgia team that just won a championship. So there's a recipe to keep it close. Can we win? Not quite sure, but I'll take a close game. I would be remiss if I didn't say the best 30 seconds I've ever seen Bo Nix play was against your Oregon Ducks as a true freshman. But I also, he's shaking his head. He's shaking his head. I love it. I Look, all, all jokes aside on that, I agree with you, right? Can you stay in this game? Because this has been my point about Oregon the whole time. If you make this a one-score game or even a 10-point game, I'm probably going to think more about the Oregon Ducks than I am about the Georgia Bulldogs. However, Georgia is got the least amount of returning starters of any team in the SEC outside of LSU who had a coaching turnover yeah. from half top to bottom. They only got three guys back. I think you're also talking about Stetson Bennett, who is the only walk-on quarterback to win a national <laughs> championship in the college football playoff era. But also, Kirby Smart seems to love that style of quarterback, so much so that he's run off more talented quarterbacks so that he has a guy that keeps his defense in the ball game. Now, if Stetson Bennett puts the ball on the floor, puts – throws it to the other team like he's want to do. I think Oregon's going to have an opportunity to yeah. do this. I'm not so interested, though, in what Kenny Dillingham and Bo Nix are going to do. I'm more interested in what Dan Lanning, Tosh Lapoy, Noah Sewell, and answer this for me, Jeff. Yeah. Can I expect to see the Justin flow that I saw in <laughs> high school? Because I dudes play 15 quarters, but every time he plays, it's outstanding, and I love the kid. He's played four quarters in two years. Um, and that was one game against Fresno last year. He had 12 tackles and then he hurt his foot in practice. Supposedly he's been wild in camp. Like he, mm. he has all the talent. He, he has the physicality. He has the motor. He has the smarts about staying healthy. You put him and Noah Sewell together. That's one of the best linebacking duos in the country. And against Georgia, you need players that can run. Both those guys can fly. They can run. They're fast and they're big and they're strong. Uh, to me, it's more about the defensive line holding up, right? We've seen throughout the years, the Pac-12 schools playing these SEC teams. Are you big enough? Mark Cristobal recruited players to Oregon that in that mold of trying to be big enough. They brought in uh, transfers for, they brought in a kid from Nebraska on the defensive line, 6'5", 330. Like they're trying to get bigger at Oregon. This is a great test in week one to see if they are capable of, of that again, win or lose, you know, you lose by 10 points, you, you, you play physical, it's a close game. You consider that a step in the right direction as far as the physical nature of your program. I'd also be remiss if I didn't point out that Dan Lanning is not just uh, a new head coach, but was the defensive coordinator at Georgia where he was yes. last year, 
had the number one scoring defense in the country Ooh, two out of the last incredible. three years. If he can bring anything like that to Oregon Ducks football, I think the Pac-12 is going to have its hands full. Thank you for watching the number one college football show. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that you don't miss any of the best college football coverage in America.